In this video, I'm going to document my entire process of posting an NFT collection on OpenSea. I want to learn more about the space, and I think that one of the best ways to learn is to actually learn by doing. So I'm going to talk about how I got the idea, how I actually created the entire collection, not just one NFT, but a bunch of variants um, of a design. I'm going to talk about how I posted it on OpenSea, and the beginning stages of the marketing, of how I'm starting to market these NFTs. And before we start this video, I do want to say, in this video, I'm not going to be explaining what an NFT is. I'm really just going to be jumping into the process of creating the NFTs, listing them, all of that stuff. So if you're curious more about what an NFT is and what that means, uh, check out my other video where I explain more about the concept of an NFT. So I don't wanna waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into it. The first thing I needed was an idea. So I browsed through OpenSea and I looked at a couple of NFT collections, some of the popular ones. I'm sure you've heard of Bored Apes. I saw some Lazy Lions. I saw Pudgy Penguins. I thought this idea of choosing an animal was interesting, so I tried to pick the most obscure animal I could think of, and I wound up choosing a platypus. Yes, a platypus. I thought that this was unique enough to maybe generate some sort of buzz, and if you notice with a lot of these other popular NFT collections like Lazy Lions and Pudgy Penguins, they had a word in front of it uh, that begins with the same letter as the animal, uh, so Lazy Lions, the L. So I ended up choosing, as the name of my NFT collection, the Perfect Platypus Collection. Okay, so I wanted to generate a bunch of different platypi uh, that look slightly different from each other and were all unique, as you can see is the case with these other collections. Now here's the thing, hand creating 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 NFTs would just not be practical, and I figured that that's probably not the way these other uh, NFT creators do it. And so I did some research into how I could automatically generate these NFTs and I found a pretty cool script that would basically do this for you. Okay, so here's the process of actually generating all of your individual NFTs. So again, I wanted to make an actual NFT collection. That was the goal here. I don't just want to post one random NFT. I want to post a bunch of them. So I just picked a number. I just said, okay, I'm just going to make 101 NFTs. So I did some research and I stumbled upon this art engine. I will leave the link for this down in the description. It's on GitHub, which means you can download this code and it's open source, which means you can use it in your projects, uh, which is super cool. So if you want to download this code, you can go to code and then download zip. The documentation of how you use this is all here. You will need to install node and NPM. There are tons of tutorials online on how to do this so i won't go into that but once you have that installed it's actually pretty simple all you have to do is download this code and then you can open it in the code editor of your choice um, and basically what you do is you have to create different folders for each of sort of the individual parts of your nft let me explain so again, I wanted to make animals. I wanted to make a platypus. And so I basically had a designer I knew create me a bunch of different parts of the animal. So first the background, right? A bunch of different colored backgrounds uh, for some variety, and then a bunch of different colored beaks, and then also a bunch of different body colors, and a lot of other stuff, hats, jewelry, sunglasses, things like that, uh, to give the platypus uh, more variety. And basically what this program is gonna do is it's gonna take all of these different layers, all of these different images, and it's gonna combine them. It'll pick something from each folder or you can specify it to not pick something um, and it's basically gonna combine it with one image from the other folders. Um, so it'll take a background, it'll take a beak, it'll take a body color, it'll take a hat, it'll take a piece of jewelry and it'll take sunglasses in my case, okay? So you make all these folders, you put images inside them and you put them in the layers folder. And then if we head to this config.js file, you can specify how many actual images do you want? So in my case, I wanted 41 images with everything. And then I wanted 20 additional images. I wanna grow the amount of images I'm creating to 61 uh, with no jewelry. See how I haven't specified the jewelry folder uh, here. And then I want 20 additional images with no hats. I didn't specify the hats folder here. And then I want uh, 20 additional images with no sunglasses. So my last grow edition size is 101. So you can do that. There's a lot of other functionality here, but that's the basic overview. All you have to do is run npm run build on your command line, and it'll instantly start generating uh, these different NFTs. And then you can head over to the build folder, and there's a bunch of images here 
uh, and it's basically all ready to go. How cool is that, right? Okay, so now I have 101 platypus images ready to be listed out into the world. There are many NFT platforms that you can list on. I think the most popular is OpenSea, so I decided to go with that platform. The first step here was actually creating the collection that you add all those individual platypus images to. So creating a collection is pretty simple. You basically just go to my collections then click create a collection. It'll then ask you for a logo image, featured image, banner image, name, description, a lot of that stuff. Um, and you can go ahead and fill that out. Um, again, I had my designer uh, draft up some of these visuals uh, because this is the thing that people are really gonna see when they're exploring a different NFT. So it's important that your collection has nice graphics. And then for actually creating an individual item, you just click add item and you just have to go through, add an image, add a name, add a description. There are properties you can add. So for each platypus, I went ahead and specified, you know, the background color of each, the beak, the body color, um, all of its uh, specific traits. That way people can kind of sort by the traits and for each platypus they can look and see each of its individual traits. And then after you've created your NFTs, there's one step remaining, which is actually setting it for sale. So creating the NFTs doesn't make it so people can buy it. It basically just creates the NFT and makes it so that it exists out there in the world. And then you just have to click complete listing um, and then click the sign button on your wallet and then you should be good to go. There are fees required to sell your NFTs and I'm gonna talk about that right now. One of the barriers to entry with NFTs is how much am I gonna have to pay? How much am I gonna have to pay to list as many NFTs as I want? And I wanna briefly talk about those fees because I know that was one of the things that I wondered most about when starting NFTs. So with OpenSea, there is a one-time account initialization fee. You just have to pay it to basically get registered on the platform and to start listing NFTs. So again, this is a one one time fee. Okay, now there are also fees required to do a whole host of other things on the platform. If you want to transfer NFTs, if you want to buy NFTs, if you're just selling NFTs for a fixed price, whether you sell one or a million, there is no cost to create each individual NFT. The reason this is the case is because of something called lazy minting. When you mint an NFT, this is how your NFT becomes part of the Ethereum blockchain. Now, OpenSea doesn't actually do this minting process when you list the NFT. It does something called lazy minting, which means when someone wants to buy your NFT, the NFT is minted basically right in that moment and it basically offsets the minting cost to the buyer NFT, not the seller. So the buyer is the person that actually needs to pay that gas fee, not the seller. So once you pay this one-time initialization fee, if you are selling NFTs for a fixed cost, you will not have to pay a gas fee for each individual NFT you list, which is very helpful because if you want to list 10,000 NFTs, you're not going to have to pay for each one of those 10,000 NFTs. Now, I believe it's a little bit different for auctions, but I didn't do auction. I just did fixed price. So once I paid that in initialization fee, I was good to go. And you may be wondering, what is this fee itself? What is a gas fee? Who is this fee going to? Again, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds. This is not a course on blockchain, but I'll give you um, a very brief explanation. OpenSea isn't taking this money, right? This isn't OpenSea deciding to charge um, a certain amount uh, for this gas fee. This is actually how the Ethereum blockchain works. The gas fee is the fee required to validate your transaction and basically make it part of the Ethereum blockchain. And what's also interesting about gas fee and, and what I think is very important to know is that it fluctuates throughout the day. If there are a lot of transactions going on on the Ethereum blockchain right now and it's very busy, the gas fee will be high. But if you wait until the night or you know until in the middle of the night or early in the morning, the gas fee is actually significantly lower. So it pays to wait. Uh, there are large fluctuations in my experience and in the middle of the day for me it was like 120 130 dollars but then as i waited it went down to 80 90 dollars okay so that's a brief overview of the fees required for listing nfts so i basically repeated this process of listing an individual nft 101 times i do want to look into how i can automate this process but there wasn't a really easy way to do it that i found online in my research but i'm going to look into it in the future okay so that's essentially the process of creating and listing an nft collection now on to the hard part actually selling it if you're just minting your own nfts you have no online followers you have no influence Selling an NFT is gonna be close to impossible unless you treat it like a regular business, you grow a following, you know, you organically 
build your online presence. The first thing I did was I went to Reddit and I posted that I was doing an NFT giveaway just to build some hype around this NFT project and I had left a link down to my NFT store below in case anyone was interested in purchasing one. A ton of people actually commented on this but no one actually bought the NFT so I didn't make any actual money from it. But of course I said I was doing a giveaway. I gave one of these NFTs away and so now there are two owners of the perfect platypus collection. I then texted some of my friends who were interested in the NFT space. Uh, I reached out to people I knew, still didn't generate any sales. So I was like, okay, I need to treat this like an actual business. Um, and I just opened an Instagram and Twitter called at NFT educators, which has the goal of actually bringing value to the community, teaching people about NFTs, because I figured the only way to drive people to my store would be to give value, right? This is how it always works. And so I'm gonna start to post on this, I'm gonna start to hopefully gain a following. If you are interested in learning more about NFTs, feel free to follow those accounts. And once in a while, I'll promote my own NFTs because it's just value exchange. And I figured that making an Instagram called the Perfect Platypus Collection wouldn't be a good idea because no one's gonna wanna follow that. But if I'm actually giving value, then I have a chance. So far, I have zero sales on OpenSea, but I'm treating this like an actual business. I'm gonna take some time growing my social medias. I'm gonna take some time to actually try to promote this online, reach out to more people, and hopefully if I get some sales, I'll make a part two to this video. If you are interested in sort of supplement videos that dive deeper into what gas fees are, more about the coding of how you can generate all these NFTs and stuff like that, leave a comment down below about what specifically you're interested in learning and I'll make follow-up videos. And lastly, if you want to buy a perfect platypus to add to your NFT collection, I've left a link down below. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.